beautiful people and welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer Diamond and if you haven't been here before, I live a whole food plant exclusive sofas free gluten free lifestyle for health and well being. And it gave me my life back and it can help you too. So today I wanted to bring you along with me while I make vegetable stuffed samosas. I love a potato dish and so I decided to um, you know take some potatoes and um, and make a fun dish and um, I'm actually gonna be going to pick up a friend of mine who is gonna have a layover here I'm gonna pick her up at the airport and I wanna bring her dinner. She is heading to True North and if you haven't seen my True North video check it out with the link above and um, True North is where I did 14 days of water fasting so check it out if you can um, and so what I already did was I took some smaller sized um, russet potatoes I washed them and peeled them and cut them up into this size right here and then I um, put this in a pot with water to cover and um, cooked it uh, probably about 20-25 minutes until it was very soft. You don't want it falling apart becoming part of the water but you don't want it to be firm at all because we're gonna mash it up. And so I went ahead and did that and set it aside to cool. You could do this step uh, a day earlier and um, that's fine but I didn't have the time so I did it just earlier in the day. Anyways what we're gonna do is I am going to mix in some seasonings and I gotta grab my potato masher because I forgot um, you could use a potato masher, you could use your hands, you could use um, a mixer, but you just want to smash up the potatoes and you don't want to have any liquid in it. You just want to make them just nice and mashed up. And I just want to show you, um, you know, how how cooked it is, right? So I could squeeze it like that. And so it's not, um, not gonna have any chunks in it. So once we get this done, we're gonna be adding some seasonings to it. And I am gonna tell you that we have some um, seasonings right here. And I have uh, savory spices, granulated onion, I've got um, some rosemary and oregano, and then I have some um, granulated garlic, some fresh basil, and if you like a little spice, go ahead and do what I'm going to do and add some crushed red peppers. Now, if you don't have red peppers, um, that's fine, or if you like a like a jalapeno or I always have these serrano peppers in our freezer. I thought about doing that, but um, you could add that as well. And if you don't have some of these other spice combinations that I just was creating, go ahead and, you know, you could even use Italian. Like you can buy an Italian blend and then you can just um, use that in place of the basil and the rosemary and the oregano. So that's another thing. Okay, this looks pretty good. I want it nice and mashed. And then I am going to add the spices. Okay, and here are the spices we just spoke about. I'm gonna go ahead and put those in there and I'm just going to take my fork and blend it. I could have continued using the potato masher um, and you know, frankly, I'm just gonna use my hands because that is what I like the most. I might just take my uh, wrist weight off just for the time being. And if you're um, not familiar with the wrist weights, I have a video I can link and you can check out some of my weighted um, equipment that I've been using. And look at this, this is looking and smelling really good. So if there's a spice that you don't like or maybe you you don't really care for any of the hot spices like the pepper, the serrano, leave it out, just leave it out. It's fine. Um, this is just really to give it a little bit of um, flavor. And actually, 
Now that I look at it, I don't think I did add the red crushed pepper to this. I think I'm gonna add it to the filling. So there you go. I guess I'm not gonna have it in the potato. And now that I think about it, I think it would be better to put in the filling and not in the potato. So that's, that's, uh, that's the beautiful part of doing this together. We learn together. So, okay, there you go. Now what I wanna do is um, just set this aside for a few minutes and rinse my hand. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is very firm. And it actually is. It's, it's almost like a dough. So um, I want to add some potato starch to it just to help it be more like a dough. Um, but I also have to see how much it actually needs. And so in the um, recipe, it calls for a lot more than I think I'm gonna put in here just because it's already forming very well. But I am gonna just measure with you a little bit here, maybe a cup. Um, let's see. Whoa, that would have been bad <laughs> if it went off. Okay, so yeah, oh, there you go, okay. So I am going to just go ahead and start adding a little half at a time, and I'm just going to start squishing it in there and forming it into a ball. Now, if it seems more wet, depending on the type of potato you use, like you could use a Yukon Gold or a red potato, and if you do use a Yukon Gold, you can leave the skin on. That's fine. Um, these were the russet, the, they were like baby, smaller russets, not like the gigantic ones. And the skin is a little thicker, and so I prefer to, um, to peel it. But so anyways, when you use a Yukon Gold, it's a creamier potato. And so you might need more of the potato starch, right? So just kind of take a look and just see. You know, I've made this before where I've used up to two cups of potato starch um, when I've had two pounds of potato. And look at this. We don't even need, I mean, just under half a cup I've used. And so I think that it might, um, might be enough. It might just add a little more, but not what I originally intended. And that's fine to figure out. Now, you could even do up to this point and then put it in the refrigerator. I said you could make it ahead of time. Um, you could do it up to this point. The idea is we're going to be rolling this like a dough and filling it. And so I want to be able to have a pliable dough made from the potato and just the potato, right? So let's just do that. All right, and here we go. Nice round almost round <laughs> ball. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and then you'll be notified when I go live or post new videos. And please give this a thumbs up. I really appreciate your support. And if you wanna talk about this, you have an idea or a question, leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, for those of you that have subscribed, thank you so much. I truly appreciate the support and help in spreading the word. So now I'm just gonna take this and set it aside for now. I'm gonna rinse my hands and be right back. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next step. And I am going to be bringing this over here just to show you, but I have this um, ceramic uh, pot and you can use any, any nonstick pot that you have. It could be stainless steel or whatever. And I'm gonna go ahead and heat this up. You know what? I actually didn't need to bring it over. I'm gonna go ahead and heat it up, and then we're gonna test it to make sure it's hot. Now, sofas free is salt, oil, flour, alcohol, and sugar free. So I don't use any oil in my cooking or add any oil at all, and, or, or any of those. But like, so we're gonna be dry sauteing, and that means taking some, um, some of the food, we're gonna use the next thing is onion and mushroom, and we are going to be placing it in the heated pot, 
and letting it do its magic. You don't need oil for it to become translucent or even browned. Now, mushrooms have their own liquid in them, and so that will help bring a type of liquid to it. Um, but if you find that it's sticking a little, just add a little tablespoon at a time of either uh, filtered fresh water or um, a no sodium uh, vegetable broth and you're good to go. So let me check and see how this is feeling. It's getting hot, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> you know that one? Okay. So I'm gonna take this guy and just see it's not quite hot enough, so we'll give it a couple more minutes. And while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna talk to you about what we're gonna do next. So I told you we're gonna add the um, mushrooms and onions, and once that seems like it's a little translucent, a little bit, maybe up to like eight, eight-ish minutes, uh, maybe just under 10, then I'm gonna add some other vegetables and some spices and liquid. And so what we have in here is ginger, uh, fresh garlic and the red crushed bell pepper, or not bell pepper, the red crushed pepper, or if you were gonna use the jalapeno or serrano, that would be where it is. And then in here, I've got a bunch of stuff. So we have red bell pepper. You can use yellow or orange if you'd like. Um, I have some zucchini. Look at how tiny I chopped these. So you want them to be small pieces. And then I have some cauliflower. You can use um, cauliflower um, that's already uh, riced, but I just chopped up what I have. And, um, and I think that's everything that I have in here. Yeah, so let me check this. Should be hot enough now. You hear that sizzle? Okay, so we are ready. Let me get a, um, a wooden spoon. I'm gonna go ahead and dump my onions in and my mushrooms. Now, what if you don't like mushrooms? Like my husband's not a huge fan of mushrooms. I know, I know, I can't even imagine. But if there is something that I'm using here that you don't care for, somebody's allergic to, you can sub out for something else that you'd rather have. And that's perfectly fine. Um, now, if you decide that you're gonna do something that's frozen, then you, you wouldn't need, um, like if you went with the cauliflower and it was riced and frozen, you know, you, you might wanna let it sit out and thaw a little bit, but it's fine to add in. We are going to be adding in a little bit of frozen food at the end, um, and that's gonna be, and we'll go over it later again, I'm gonna be using this um, classic mixed vegetables of corn, peas, and carrots. And I could use fresh, but I had that, so I'm gonna use it up, so. Now I heated it on a high heat and I'm gonna go ahead and lower it now to a medium heat and I'm just gonna keep a watch on it and I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, so I feel like this is already done. Um, and I originally was saying, you know, cook it for seven minutes, but again, there's always a variable. I'm gonna show you here. Um, but do you see how it's browning up? So it's good. Maybe because this time my pieces were cut even smaller, maybe that's why I didn't need to cook it as long. So just be mindful that it could be as quick as two minutes and depending also on the heat of your flame or it could be up to seven minutes. Regardless, we're ready to move on. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these other vegetables that we just talked about. All of them go in there, everybody in. Everybody in. And I'm gonna add my other um, garlic and ginger and the red pepper flakes, the crushed pepper flakes. Because I like things sometimes just a little bit of spice. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I have um, a few cups of this. This is homemade vegetable broth. If you haven't seen my uh, homemade vegetable broth made out of veggie scraps, go ahead and take a look. I'll link it above. 
But if you don't have that, just try to get a store-bought one that doesn't have oil or salt. Make sure you really look at the ingredients, not just read the front that says, you know, maybe a misleading something or it doesn't show all the ingredients, but actually check the label in the back. And so we're pouring this in here. And now what I'm gonna do, oh, if you don't have vegetable broth or you don't have enough, you can use water. I really like using the vegetable broth because it brings another element of flavor to the dish. And I, I just love to pull out all the flavors when we eat plants. It's important to, to do that. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up. Not all the way, I do have it cracked because I want some of the steam to come out. I'm gonna turn it back to medium and I'm gonna let it cook until it's almost all the way evaporated. Uh, that will allow the veggies to get nice and cooked and then it will also allow um, just a little bit of liquid. We're not gonna be able to pour liquid into a potato thing. And so at that point, we'll be able to add the rest of these uh, veggies. These were the frozen ones that I spoke about and let the evaporation finish. So while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna clear everything out and we are gonna go back to um, our dough, our potato dough and get it ready. So you can either do a clean counter or you can do some parchment paper, which is what I have here. Um, the idea is that we wanna be able to roll out this dough. So whatever you feel comfortable with, um, and then I'm gonna just take a little bit of the potato starch. I use potato starch with potatoes because it just makes sense for me, um, you know, that it's potato. <laughs> so here we go, here we have our nice ball. Look at this, uh, isn't this pretty? And I am going to cut it into thirds. You can cut it in half, but I think I'm gonna go with some thirds And the reason I wanna do that is just because it's gonna make it easier for me to handle, um, handle things. So here we go, they're not perfect. In fact, this one is a little on the smaller side, so I might just grab some, and then I'm gonna put these two back in here, and we're gonna start with this guy. And I'm just literally kind of coating it with the potato um, starch. And then I have this little rolling pin. You could use a rolling pin, you don't have to. Um, and I'm just gonna roll it out and make these little round circle, um, kind of like what you would do with a pizza crust, except we're not gonna make pizza. And I want it to be about, I don't know, a between a quarter inch and half inch is like max, but you know, it's all very forgiving. You just wanna make sure that it's not sticking. I'm gonna do it on the counter. I'm also gonna use that parchment paper just to show you um, you know, if you didn't have parchment paper. I didn't want to use the sill pad that I use for cooking because I do think that it would stick, um, you know, trying to roll it on that because it's kind of a sticky surface. But here we go. It's very therapeutic too. I, I really do enjoy doing this. What about you? Do you guys ever enjoy just certain parts of cooking that feel very therapeutic to you? I don't know, I do. All right, so I'm going to put put another pinch of this right on here. And then I could even, don't be afraid of it. You can fold it and move it and add more of the potato um, starch. Ugh, see, look at it. it is kind of falling apart, but that's okay. I can push it back together. And that might have to do with the fact that we didn't use as much potato starch as I thought we were going to. But regardless, we're gonna be fine. Okay, and I'm just kind of making my shape here. I want this a little more round. And you don't need a rolling pin. It's just if you have one and you know, you wanna use your tools, right? Make things easy and simple. But if, if it makes it more difficult, then skip it. All right, so this is ready. Um, before we do anything else with this one, I wanna go ahead and check our veggies. There's my guy. Take a look. So you can see that it's starting to look like it's boiling.
product. Now, if you wanted to use less liquid, I mean, you could. The idea is, is that you want the vegetables to be completely cooked through. And it's basically everything is cooked and then we're just gonna be heating it. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this. Um, you could use a pizza cutter at this point. I like to use a knife, um, but I don't have either. Oh, here I do. Okay, and so what I'm gonna wanna do is just cut it down the middle. I wanna make triangle shapes. And then I'm gonna cut it like across the other side as if this was, um, you know, a square or an X. And then I'm gonna cut them again like that. And I'm making eight pieces here. Now, if you wanted to use the dough and just use two pieces, two circles, that's fine. Your triangles will be larger and that's fine. You'll be able to put more stuff in it. Um, I just wanted to go with something that was a little easier um, to handle. So you can see that there, this is what we're looking for, a nice triangular shape. And so I'm gonna go ahead and Hmm, well, because I didn't put it on anything, I'm gonna have to move it out of the way. But normally I would leave it there until the veggies are ready and then we would stuff them, which we'll do, but I'm just gonna move these out of the way so that we could try it on the parchment paper. Okay, so here's our second one. You can see it's on the parchment paper. It's not quite perfectly round. I could fix it, but I just wanna show you that it doesn't matter. You still uh, can be successful here and you just cut this down the middle and then again, cut it down the middle again, the opposite way, and then go ahead and cut it down and make those triangles, the one into two. There we go. Look at that. Okay, let me take a peek over here because I hear it sizzling and I just want to check that out. Wow, that's looking good. Look at that. So it's still got plenty of liquid in it. So we're just going to let it continue to cook. And I am going to roll one more. I think this is really good to have the parchment paper, right? Because then I can easily pick it up and move it and so on. Um, but I'm going to just do this one so I don't waste another piece of parchment, um, and then I'll probably move them onto the parchment, so. Okay, so I cleaned up a little bit, not too much actually, and so I wanna take you over here and let's take a peek and see how things are progressing. And boy, they are, look at that. <laughs> Can you see that? It's really, really um, cooked down nicely. There's a little bit of liquid in it, and so I am going to add the last few things. Now I have cilantro, I'm gonna use it as a garnish and I'm also gonna put some in there. If you don't like cilantro, switch it out for parsley. If you don't like parsley, skip it all together. But just remember herbs are, are so wonderful for us and um, I encourage you to use some. You could even, if you don't like either of those, try mint, try, try dill, try anything that thinks, uh, that sounds good to you. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour some of that in there. And I do chop up the little stem part and use the whole part of the cilantro. I'm adding some lemon juice and I'm adding the vegetables that were frozen. Gives it a nice pop of color, but we don't need that much time. And if you can cook the, um, the frozen part, especially the peas, just at the last part of it, it also might encourage the the vibrant color to stay. Like when we cook, um, you know, broccoli, for example, um, sometimes if you overcook it, that bright color will kind of get a dark color. It doesn't matter, it's still edible, but it's just, it's just nice. So look at how pretty that is. And this is our stuffing. So I'm just gonna let it cook maybe another five minutes, keeping a close watch until the liquid 
is all disintegrated and or evaporated I should say and we also want to make sure that we don't burn it so we got to keep a close watch so um, uh, also as far as the lemon goes I have this I use sometimes this is a you know an organic pure lemon juice it's just ready to go um, but sometimes I use fresh lemon depending on what I have on hand and if I use the fresh lemon I would add the lemon zest so keep that in mind when you're making yours and um, we'll be back in a few minutes okay it's just been a few minutes let's go ahead and take a look in the pot Woo, look at that. This is exactly what I'm talking about. It's not sticking to the ground and there's no liquid. This is perfect and it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the fire off and I'm gonna just put it on the back burner so that um, it won't continue to cook, but it's hot. So I gotta get my glove and um, And I want to keep the lid off because I'm trying to cool it off just a tad. Um, I could even move it into a bowl, but I'm not going to. And so now we're going to start the fun part, which is starting to take these and wrap them uh, with the filling. I like to use melon ballers for the filling and I have these two. Um, I usually like to use the big one or you could use the little one and you know, whatever. Um, I wonder which one I'll use today. I might do the small one and I can always do two scoops, but whatever works for you, I just find these to be really easy to use and I like them. So now what I'm gonna do, because I wanna keep going and I don't wanna wait anymore, I'm gonna move the hot pan that I told you to let cool off over here and we're gonna try to stuff these. Here we go. Okay, there we go. Maybe what I'll do is hold the pan with this. And then I just want to take a scoop and I want to put it towards the back, just like that. And I want to do one at a time, but here I am <laughs> doing it this way. I'll do two at a time. Just kind of want to show you. And so what I want to do is I want to just kind of get under here. And I want to take the triangle pointy part and I want to fold it over to the top and squish it together. And then I want to fold the sides up and I kind of just want to press everything together. And if you find that it seems like it's not holding, just keep pressing it and it will hold. Here you go. Look at this. See? And then you have your nice little piece here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting these in the basket of the air fryer. And, um, and then after the air fryer is full, I'll start using a, the Silpat on the cookie sheet. So let me grab this. I already lined this particular one, the basket here. And so I'm just gonna lay these down right here as we go. And that's it, so let's get busy. Now what I'm noticing is last time I made this, the dough was very flexible and this time it's a little more crumbly. And so if it does become a little bit more crumbly, just pinch the edges together and you'll be fine. So here is my second container. Whoa, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and start these in the air fryer. I'll be right back. And usually I have a perfect amount of filling for potato, but if I ever had too much filling or too much potato, I could um, freeze them and use them another time. Now, some people think that the texture of frozen potato when they thaw isn't really that great. And so if you had extra, you could fill it with anything, um, including just cook it the way it is in an air fryer or a pan and kind of have a crispy, kind of a uh, triangle potato, so not to worry. 
Okay, so you have our last ones here. Fits perfectly in a pan. This can go in the oven, like I said, um, at uh, 350 degrees for about 20 minutes and then check them. If they need, they might need longer, but check them at the 20 minute mark and then decide if they're brown enough for you or you wanna to continue to keep them in there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat this oven, which I didn't do yet, and I'm gonna put it in there and then I'm gonna rinse my hands and we are gonna check on the air fry. Be right back. Okay, it's been 10 minutes in the air fryer and you can see it's just starting now to show a little bit of signs of brown. So I'm gonna put it back in for another 10 minutes and then I'll see, are they ready? Do they need to be flipped? We'll go from there. Let's take a peek at what's going on in the air fryer. It's just about the 20 minute mark. Last time they were done at this point, but let's check and see how they're doing. Whoa, what do you think? I think they're looking pretty good, nice and brown. Um, I think I'm gonna turn them over and continue to cook them for a little bit longer. Ah, now, it's really hot and I tend to do this, but, but maybe use a tool or something so that you don't burn yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in for another 10 minutes. Okay, the ones in the air fryer are finished. It went off, I wanna grab them and let's put them in this bowl here and plate them in a serving uh, plate and then taste it. I'll be right there. Oh wow, yeah, these look fantastic. Look at that. Looking good? So you could pour it out. I'm just gonna carefully <laughs> watch my fingers and plate these yummy, delicious looking veggie stuffed samosas. Now, when I serve this or offer it to my friend, we're gonna have some fruit, strawberries or watermelon. I'm gonna have a big salad and then we're gonna have some of these, but I gotta try them with you. I can't serve them without trying them with you. And so I'm just gonna put a couple here on the plate. Um, and so what I would say is, if you wanna do the cilantro, go ahead and you know just kinda of put a little bit on there. You don't have to. Um, but anyways, you could do it with like some kind of a cashew dressing or you could do a chutney. Um, there's all kinds of different chutneys. You could do a mint chutney or a mango. Um, and so anyways, I've got a little bit of that right here. And so I am going to put this right on here um, and Give it a crunch, okay? It's hot, I'm holding it, but it's hot. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. That is fantastic. Oh my gosh. The sweetness of the chutney is really fantastic. I will try it with um, a cashew dressing, which I have, I'll pull some out. Um, but I do want to have another bite and see if I can show you the inside without the without this falling off. So let me eat it. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> Look at that. Mmm. And even just plain, if you don't have a sauce or you don't have anything that you want to put on here, even just plain is pretty fantastic. Look at I didn't even think about it. I just went ahead and did that. But I wanted to grab the dressing to share with you um, how that would taste. Hold on. I mean, you could even, if you like, you could even do like, I don't know, a salsa. I wonder what that would taste like. Salsa. I'm going to just drizzle a little on the other side. This is a really thick dressing that I made. Oh, my goodness. Looks so yummy. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. 
<laughs> okay. Any sauce will work, I think. Um, the creamy one is great. The sweet chutney is wonderful. Plain is delicious. So you decide and let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much, everyone. Don't forget to eat your greens and give plants a chance. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye.